Hey everybody, Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com, back with some more Pittsburgh Steelers recap and reaction to their 24-19 loss to the Cleveland Browns on Thursday night. Pittsburgh now 8-3 on the season, a doozy of a loss in the snow. Let's talk about it. Before we start, if you guys could like this video, subscribe to the channel, and check out the site, SteelersDepot.com. Would really appreciate that. So, where to begin in this one? Disappointing, obviously, not terribly surprised by it, unfortunately. Pittsburgh's good for a stinker like this once a year, at least, if not more. And given the circumstances, playing on the road, short week, physical AFC North game, the weather, yada yada, the stuff we talked about pregame. Uh, doesn't excuse the loss and the mistakes, but this one from the beginning, you just knew you were going to be in for, a, at best, a close win, and at worst, a loss. And you got the ladder in this one. Pittsburgh super sloppy in this game. Penalties, miscommunication, inability to work in short yarded situations. Um, the weather obviously played an impact, couldn't pass protect. It's just kind of a checkbox, a turnover in your own territory. The Wilson fumble at the end of the half there was obviously impactful, so my mind's kind of bouncing around a bunch of different places, but just kind of go back to the central point of being pretty sloppy overall. You're in a third and one, you get a false start, go to a third and six, you don't convert a pair of fourth and ones, the first one which is rushed and got Lyman jogging off the field, and you break the huddle with 10 seconds left, you get a line with two seconds left, then these plays are just doomed from the start, and that's when Mike Tomlin has to step in and call timeout, I think, so there's blame to be given all around in a situation like that. But that happened last week, Sunday, I should say, against Baltimore. One of their fourth down attempts was rushed, and that stuff just has to get cleaned up. We're here in November, guys. This is not preseason. It's not even week one or week two where it might be new and you're not repping that uh, maybe as intently as you might be in other situations. So just from an organizational standpoint, just breaking the huddle on time playing clean, not moving, false start on a field goal by Cam Hayward. That kind of stuff just just really bothers you, and it really bothered me too. Some positives, I thought. Jalen Warren ran hard, had a rushing touchdown. Calvin Austin, a big game, two receptions down the seam. Wish that first one, I know Wilson was under pressure, but if that ball could have been out in front, if Austin doesn't have to slow up for it, it's almost certainly a touchdown. Pittsburgh ended that drive in a field goal, I believe. So that's a, a big difference, obviously. Um, you know, they, they, they did battle and you want to give them some credit for that. They got to go ahead, touchdown, a really nice catch by Austin playing big down the seam. Pittsburgh's going to see more and more of those two high shells to take away the outside vertical throws that Wilson loves to, to put up there and that George Pickens is capable of, uh, of making. And so you better be able to a run the ball in those situations and then be in passing situations as the Austin catch was better be able to win down the seams and split those safeties. And Austin did Pickens had some big catches and, Early in the game, a 31-yard reception. Uh, had a slant on third down against Ward, a tough catch later in the first half. Uh, Van Jefferson, a catch in a either cover two hole shot or, I don't know, something between a corner and a, and a DB over the top. But either way, I think a 30-yard reception for him. So there were certainly some plays made offensively. But the running game, it had success early. I felt like it could have had more, especially later in the game. And then just not able to close things out. You know, you get that interception off the... Dante Jackson pick, it's 422 left in the fourth quarter. You are in literal four-minute offense, and you can try to really close that game out. And Pittsburgh um, just was unable to. You end up throwing incomplete on third and long, take that deep shot to Pickens, and stop the clock, and time's really not an issue for Cleveland the other way. And so you think about some of the games of yesteryear. I think about some of the Bengals games. I think a Buffalo game that was in the snow where Pittsburgh ran the ball at will in the fourth quarter and the Steelers unable to do so against a, a Browns run defense that has not been very good this season. And so, yeah, just just not physical enough up front overall, a lot of sloppiness, and just unable to finish this game off. Defensively, you got stops early. I thought Pittsburgh really stood tall the first two drives where the Browns had the ball in excellent territory, field position, and Pittsburgh was getting stops. I think for me, just the lack of pass rush throughout this game really stuck out. The Browns came into this one, the most sacked team in football. Winston was taking fewer sacks than Watson, but had still been sacked 
I think nine times his last two games. And so there was still negativity there. And Pittsburgh only had the one sack. It was a big one by Nick Herbig. That one forced the fumble. Pittsburgh recovered and really got Pittsburgh back into this one and to, to build up the lead. But, you know, throughout the game, it was pretty quiet. I think about the Jameis Winston rushing touchdown and TJ Watt on an island with Jack Conklin, a good right tackle, but somebody TJ Watt certainly can, can overmatch and overpower and win against, and Watt's ridden up field. And throughout the game, just not enough impact there from the interior rush, from Herbig, aside from that one big play, but obviously that is at least one big play that Herbig can hang his hat on, and, and he should be credited for that. But Watt was really quiet on a day where Miles Garrett dominated and had three sacks and greatly impacted this game despite seeing tons of attention, as T.J. Watt does. Uh, that's a big difference, obviously, and, and that one really hurt. Special teams... Obviously struggling in the adverse conditions. Boswell missing from 58. Tough kick, obviously, but a miss is a miss um, in that situation. And then the big one, Corliss Waitman, the 16-yard shank, after that failed third and whatever, third down incompletion to pick in some fields. Uh, that one you know, gave Cleveland the ball in Pittsburgh territory. And so I know the weather was really bad at that point, but just can't have a shank. Got to make a kick, even a 40-yarder that bounces. Okay, I'll take that. You can't have 16 yards there, obviously. So that came up big as well, working against Pittsburgh. I think a really poor game coaching from Mike Tomlin from the end of the first half, not using a timeout. I'm not sure what the rationale. I mean, I get the rationale. He wanted to keep his final timeout, ended up not using it. But take the timeout, save the 40 seconds. I just thought that was a really poor decision by him. Again, I do put some of the lack of communication and fluidity in some of those fourth down situations and, and rushing to the line uh, on him, uh, or also on Arthur Smith, some of these more prolonged, drawn-out run schemes, this fake quarterback run by Fields. We're going to fake the guard one way, go the other. That's un- not it shouldn't be necessary in those moments. It wasn't needed for the Browns. They just were sneaking and barreling forward on fullback dives and QB sneaks, and Moving the sticks, um, the end of the game there on that, was it intentional grounding? It's the illegal touching. You know, I know hindsight's twenty twenty, but I had said before the outcome of that situation, don't accept the penalty. Make it fourth and two instead of third and seven because the Browns could be in two-down territory. They seem to have that posture, and you never know what can happen when you give Winston two bites at the apple. I know Tomlin said they're trying to push those guys back, make the field goal tougher, but... I would have made it a one-play thing. Fourth and two, you guys want to go for it when you need a field goal to take the lead or you know, make, really put the pressure on them. Third and seven gave them some options. They convert there. And then, of course, you take the timeout, I think, in the middle of all of that. And so you're down to one timeout. Give up the conversion. Give up the touchdown. Really hurts you on the other end. Um, and so those are really, really costly decisions. All those big, weighty moments worked against Pittsburgh, and a lot of it was self-inflicted. So it's late, going to wrap this video up, got 10 days to sit on this, and that really sucks to have to, to sit and wait and, you know, just deal with this one for 10 days and all the media chatter that's going to come from it, the George Pickens stuff that's out there. That's really all noise, it's not good, obviously, but it's low on my list of concerns or issues uh, for this game. I, I do want to leave on, I know this won't be taken well, but an optimistic look. They're 8-3, and three. they're going to be in first place no matter what happens when Baltimore plays on Monday night against the Chargers, and they could lose that game. We'll see. Um, you know, obviously they're gonna bounce back against the Bengals. That'll be a be a test there, clearly, but not gonna not gonna say the season's over off of one loss. These things happen. Pittsburgh unfortunately pretty good at showing these things happen, and that's an issue, obviously. But Sun's gonna come out tomorrow and they got some time here to uh to correct things. And we talked a lot about this would be a tough game. This is not just a two and eight Cleveland Browns. There were a lot of challenges and a lot of reasons to believe it was close. And I had it 17-14 Steelers. I should have went Browns. I had that bad feeling about it, but hey, I was wrong. I picked Pittsburgh to squeak this one out. Almost did, but not good enough. But not gonna not gonna have a sky is falling mentality. It sucks. We're gonna talk about the issues, as I just did, but the se- the season is not over. They were <laughs> I mean, they went 7-7 seven and seven last year, three-game losing streak, losing to the Pats, the Colts, and the Cardinals, and they made the playoffs. So, obviously, they're going to make the playoffs, at least be highly, highly unlikely they didn't. Um, so, you know, got a game against the Bengals, and we'll go from there. So, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Appreciate you guys watching. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and 
Check out the site, SteelersDepot.com. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.